Internet computer, unstoppable, unhackable, infinitely scalable, and yet slow. The date and time of this recording is October 15th, 2024 at about 6.18 p.m. Pacific time. Recently, Bob and Burn projects on internet computer have spiked the use of internet computer, and one might logically assume that Bob, if nothing else, was responsible for congesting the subnet that it was on. And while it did use quite a bit of resources, but unfortunately, it seems that the problem might go a bit deeper than just Bob running a bunch of miners. Earlier in October, somebody posted on the Definity forums regarding a application on the internet computer called Mural, spelled Y-R-A-L. I'm not entirely sure how that is supposed to be pronounced. Here we see the post on the Definity forum which states that URL, as the name suggests, has been designed and architected to go viral. We have always endeavored to build an app that can scale and absorb traffic for millions of users. However, every time we start driving traffic, we've been bottlenecked by constraints and limits imposed by the IC network. We had started with a single canister architecture for the very first version of our app, which was written in Motoko back in late 2021, early 2022, back when we were called Go Bazinga. It started receiving some initial traffic, but around the 10,000 active user mark, we noticed significant bottlenecking and slowdowns, which led us to realize that a single canister, which is single threaded, can only scale so much. So around late 2022, when we launched a new game and we rebranded to Hot or Not, we rewrote our entire backend to a multi-canister system, where we would spin up individual canisters for every individual signing up. This would ensure that every user signing up would have enough compute, storage, and bandwidth resources that they needed to do whatever we could possibly imagine for them to do. And I promise there is a point here. It will be interesting for those of you that are actually interested in learning more about internet computer and some challenges that the blockchain faces. The post goes on to read, we were acutely aware of the limitations of a single subnet. However, we've had multiple conversations with the Definity team during that time that subnet splitting was actively being worked on and would be available soon. Subnet splitting essentially allows a subnet to split into two and divide canisters into two groups and divide all canisters into two different subnets. We were hoping this would be able to solve our scaling challenges as every time a subnet for us became full, we would just split the subnet to two and continue scaling. Seems to make some sense so far. The problem though is they wouldn't post this if they weren't still having issues. In the meantime, the hot or not game was a hit and we quickly started getting traction as the subnet started filling up. At its peak, we had 300,000 active users with 50,000 users signed in with their own canisters. At this point, we had to spill over to more subnets to be able to scale further. However, subnet splitting was still not available and we had to shut down signups to the game as we were running out of canisters to spin up for new users. This was devastating for us as we had to shut down signups to our app for months. All of this while we were trying to complete our SNS sale. That was a whole other can of worms. You think testing for SNS is difficult now? Imagine what it was like for us doing it as the second ecosystem app on the IC doing the SNS sale independently. So we do emphasize with James Beadle as we look at instances like this as we sense their clear frustration with what that entire process looks like. And we'll take a look at what James has said in that thread shortly. And I'm going to wrap up this thread by just touching on a couple other details here. So we started building our own multi-subnet, multi-canister, dynamically load balancing backend. It required us to keep our heads down and build. During this time, we had to deal with a lot of criticism as we were not shipping any user-facing features. We were also walking a path that no one had walked before, and hence there was a certain uncertainty as to whether we would be able to pull it off. However, early this year, we shipped our new backend that could dynamically load balance between multiple subnets and multiple canisters, and we were itching to put it through its paces and stress the entire network. Just a little spoiler, it didn't 
didn't work out. And they talk about how they did all of this at the expense of not shipping using fa facing features that would appease the market and their customers. They skipped taking advantage of a potentially very profitable meme coin season. However, as they started to scale, almost every other app on the IC has started to bottleneck as we start to massively drive traffic to the IC on all the subnets. Here's Manu from Definity acknowledging that most of the load is from Rural presence on all the subnets. He since retracted his original statement, but due to the way discourse functions, you can still see it on this reply. And this is the reply that they're referring to. Here's links to a couple threads which all raise the issue of instability and bottlenecks arising from us starting to drive traffic to all the subnets on the IC. And I will put links to to this article in the video description. You can find way more, all originating from around 20 days back or so when we started our first airdrop as documented here. This entire effort also required a significant amount of cycles to fund, meaning it wasn't free. They spent close to $200,000 in cycle costs in the last two months, owing to how regressive cycle reservation and inefficient the current infrastructure is. And here is what Ural is asking for. As I was writing this, I refrained from posting the original draft as there was a lot of frustration that was surfacing from the repeated roadblocks that we run into every time we start scaling and driving traffic, gain momentum, onboard users, but the momentum gets killed due to network constraints and bottlenecks that are outside our control. This time as well, we've been noticing the short-term discussion seems to be towards raising costs to the point that we're artificially constraining high-growth apps. If the internet computer intends to be a world computer, it needs to be able to handle a measly growth of tens of thousands of canisters without breaking a sweat. We're not even talking about millions of canisters yet. We're asking for focus on improving the protocol drastically to add mechanisms for easy migrations, load detection, and dynamic load balancing. And of course, there are people who joined into the conversation. One person saying that they sounds to me like they agree. And I don't know how to pronounce this, but AJ, KI is somebody who is very active on X. If you are on X talking crypto much, you have probably seen multiple posts from him lately. And of course, here's James Beadle saying that he agrees with this. It's been such a frustrating process. And here's Manu from the Definity team and one of their responses. And I think a big thing that Ural is not thrilled with is this response saying the two main issues you, you bring up, subnets currently not handling huge numbers of canisters well and the cycle cost of a fleet of canisters boil down to the architecture that Ural chose to follow where it uses a new canister for every user. Definity R&D has repeatedly warned Ural that this is not a scalable architecture, urged the Ural team to revisit this choice and offered to help make that change. Ural chose to stick to the one canister per user approach and now run into scalability challenges and per canister costs. My advice remains the same. Don't use a new canister per user for projects that aim to onboard a big amount of users. Now, believe it or not, despite how much talking I've done and how much I've read, I am not going to read this whole thread. I didn't even read the whole first post. You'll see here the original poster responding, and I'm not going to go point by point, but if you scroll down through here, you'll see that let's look at currently who are the apps that are looking to onboard a large number of users or are already doing so. Open chat, lead devs or X and Definity engineers uses a single canister per user model which is specifically what Manu said to Ural not to do, has overwhelming support from the affinity for R&D and engineering, not claiming favoritism, but pointing out that they are privy to a lot of early protocol related discussions owing to their close association with Definity. Them doubling down on an approach probably points to thoughtful consideration of pros and cons. Definity helped acquire dedicated, dedicated subnets. Definity helped lower per 
canister cost from 1 trillion cycles to 100 billion cycles to help reduce user acquisition cost. And so, yeah, some of this kind of turns into a he said, she said, why are you helping them but not us? Why are you telling us to do something opposite of what another project's doing and it's working perfectly fine for them? And you worked much more closely with that group of people than you have with us. And yet, if we try to do basically the same thing that they're doing, you're telling us it's our fault for doing it wrong. At least that's what I'm getting from this. They go on to talk about one of the earliest so social dApps on IC that had and has a significant user base. Pushed to the very limits, eventually gave in and moved to a multi-canister model where every community spawned on the platform is a separate canister. Dragons, the most ambitious game yet on the internet computer with a Minecraft-like world building capability. They also have these concepts of worlds or hubs. They've modeled them as a single canister per world or hub, although they're also not released, so it hasn't, to my knowledge, it hasn't been fantastically stress test to this point. Catalyze, they quickly outgrew their single canister model and also moved to a multi canister model where every community gets a separate canister for hosting data. So I think you probably get the gist of what Ural is saying. And again, I'm going to provide links in the video description so that you can read through it all on your own time and get all the details that are available in that thread. And as far as the James Beadle thread that Ural referenced, James says, give me some cycles. I don't know how to get across the money involved in this for me. So I take the ICP I raised in the SNS, pay developers and associated other staff. We don't have an app to promote. Everything has a lead time. So repeatedly, the strings of the delays I've experienced have cost me tens of thousands of pounds. It's worse than that because I truly decentralized my app. I have to go to my DAO token holders and ask for more funding on the back of not delivering. Thanks for this. I'm sure they'll be keen. I have a backlog of campaigns, content, and other stuff that just sits here, all just wasting away. And I'm not going to go through this whole post or this whole thread, but he does talk about problems, frustrations, and he says, I want you to recognize you are potentially destroying my life. And for what? AI? 64-bit? Bob.fun is blocking up the subnets if you'd only support open FPL the way you supported the ICP drain. So with Dominic Williams constantly talking about, we're going to solve the world cybersecurity threat. We're going to host AI large language models on chain. We're going to move virtually all software on chain and decentralize it, you know, because internet computer is infinitely scalable. It's tamper proof. It's unstoppable. And, you know, it's, it's the best technology that the world has seen in a generation, you know, essentially is what the man says. And yet there seems to be some legitimate concerns. What I would like to know is why does James Beadle have to go and create an NNS proposal to increase cycle costs, thereby trying to prevent projects like Bob from just blasting the subnet and taking all of the subnet resources so that other developers can't make progress. And here is that NNS proposal that I just mentioned, and I will link to this in the video description as well. Just bear in mind, you will have to be signed into the NNS to be able to pull this up and read it for yourself. Or I suppose you could go to the Definity Forum. This proposal is simple. If you support raising costs to decreased network congestion, vote yes. If you want to keep subsidized ICP compute costs in place and wait another two to six weeks for applications to maybe be reliable to use again, vote no. And to be clear, I did vote to adopt because I don't think this is a good long-term solution. This sounds like more of a quick Band-Aid fix, but that also means that this can be reverted fairly quickly and easily compared to a lot of other changes. And so I'm not too worried about it. And you also see that the community thus far has voted overwhelmingly to adopt, right? With 40, almost 41% voting to adopt and about 14% voting to reject. So something else that I learned recently is if you take a look at the actual subnets on internet computer, and if you look at the application subnets, not the system subnets, not the fiduciary subnets, not the NNS, but the actual application subnets or the European subnets,
subnet, you're going to see that they're all 13 node subnets, which to my understanding is the minimum number of nodes. And I'm talking every single one of them. In fact, some of them are even missing some nodes. And so this whole infinitely scalable, unstoppable, tamper-proof, hack-proof, well, why don't they bring on another subnet? Or why don't they add nodes to subnets that are suffering? Now, I imagine that the proposal to increase the cost to combat the, the problem in the short term is probably a much quicker, easier thing to implement than changing the subnets, which if true, that just raises another question, which is how can it be unstoppable if you can't very quickly and easily add some nodes to a subnet or activate a subnet? Now, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I don't think that we can just simply blame Definity because governance is up to the community at this point. And Definity is a major backer of Internet Computer. And to be clear, Dominic Williams founded Definity Foundation. Definity Foundation created Internet Computer, but then they kind of put it out to pasture. Not, not to never support it again, but they don't really own Internet Computer. It's decentralized. It's governed by a decentralized autonomous organization through the NNS, which is why there's proposals on the NNS for changes. So I think the question is really, why did no one in the community vote to add nodes to subnets or bring a subnet online? Again, maybe it's because it's not a quick fix, but shouldn't it be a quick fix by design? Otherwise, how would it be unstoppable? Now, here is a list of public subnets that was updated September 14th, 2024. So it very well may not be the most up-to-date list, but I still find this very interesting. You'll notice in this column that's listed as public that money of these subnets are not public subnets. And although I'm not certain, but I think that if it's not a public subnet, it means that it's not available for a developer building on internet computer to use it. I'm not certain, but I believe that is the case. And I don't know why that is. There will be a link to this in the video description as well. Despite all of these problems, which I'm actually kind of surprised that there's this many problems that have been going on for this long, well, surprised to a point. You oftentimes find when you really start to dig into something that um, it might be a little disappointing compared to what your initial understanding or perceptions of the project or product or person originally was. That said, I'm still bullish on ICP. And quite frankly, I'm actually glad that this happened and this has blown up recently because these things need to be addressed and these things should be a priority because you can't start deploying thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dApps, especially if even just a handful of them end up attracting hundreds of thousands or millions or tens of millions of users because apparently it only takes one or two dApps to bring down an entire subnet, possibly the entire network. And so, you know, that's not really ideal, is it? So I think that Definity really needs to get those 200 plus members of their team and however many of them, I think it's like 82 R&D team members that they list on the Definity website, I think that those people with their bachelors and masters and PhDs need to start applying themselves to addressing these problems because it sounds to me like these are real problems. And I'm just glad that we didn't have to wait as a community, you know, another two years, five years, 10 years before learning of these kinds of issues. And this is one of the reasons why I'm taking the time to make this video, even though I know other people have spoken spoken to it already, and I'm slightly late to the game, all the same. I think that the more of us that talk about this, the more people become aware, the more people that are aware, hopefully the more that Definity or some other very capable members of the ICP community will decide to address these issues and work together to find a solution so that we can move forward and have a much stronger blockchain and a much brighter future.